She's back, back, back again. Hallelujah! The whale, the mother of the A320, the aircraft Qatar Airways slammed Emirates for operating just earlier this year. The Airbus A380, and this time it's Qatar Airways becoming the fifth operator to fly the A380 on commercial routes since April 2020. I've reviewed this aircraft in first and business class before, but a lot has changed to Qatar Airways since the pandemic began. And there's a lot of questions about the A380 experience. How drastic is the business class quality reduction? Are hot towels back? What about candles? The bar is the standout feature of the A380, and what are they doing with that considering that all self-service areas are closed on their other aircraft? I was shocked when I saw what they're doing on board. Well, come with me on this inaugural six-hour flight from Doha, Qatar to Paris, France. I'm so freaking excited. <laughs> So today's video is brought to you by NordVPN, but more on them later. All I want to say for now is that you don't want to travel to the Middle East without having NordVPN installed on your phone. This video will be broken down into four parts. Lounge and airport, A380 configuration, onboard experience, and last but perhaps most interestingly, why is Qatar Airways bringing back the A380 and which additional routes might we see? The previous night, I'd flown in from Sri Lanka where I'd traveled around for about a week after spending three fantastic weeks reuniting with one of my favorite places on earth, Thailand. Now I was heading back to Sweden for Christmas with a detour in the land of funny hats. Good morning from Doha. I just checked out of the Transit Hotel or one of two Transit Hotels here, Sleep and Fly. It's 6 a.m. and I'm ready for a shower. Normally, I'd book a city hotel in Doha since these tend to be pretty affordable and it's only a 10 minute ride to the airport. Unfortunately, COVID restrictions make this a huge pain in my hummus craving arse. So for now, most of us are stuck shelling out ridiculous sums. I'm talking $200 a night for this or $300 a night for this to have somewhere to rest our little heads given the reduced frequencies on many QR routes, resulting in overnight layovers. Now sleep and fly is fine and the staff is lovely, but they don't have showers. For that, you need to head to the Al Murjan Lounge or the Priority Pass Lounge depending on which you have access to, if any. I haven't spoken much about the Almorjan Lounge before, but of course, I love it in general. I find the staff to be consistently pleasant, the food is among the best of any business class lounge in the world, and the design is breathtaking. Sadly, there is one drawback, it gets uncomfortably crowded at peak times. I'm talking a 10 to 20 minute wait to even get a table to eat, 30 minute waits for a shower, and no available seats. To solve this, luckily Qatar Airways is building a second business class lounge opening next year which I'm dying to check out. They've also reopened their Al Safwa First Class Lounge, which some elite members have access to as well as passengers flying to select Middle Eastern destinations where they sell business class as first class. The experience is top notch on these sectors with Arabic coffee, meal service on 40 minute flights, and of course usually live flat seats. It's sort of ironic you can get food faster on a 40 minute flight from Doha to Dubai than you can get in the lounge at peak times. Anyway, the Al Morjan Lounge shower rooms are just as beautiful as the rest of the lounge and feature toiletries that I could probably resell and pay back my college debt with. They are that expensive. If you've never showered in an airport lounge before, let me explain the feeling because there is nothing as luxurious to me. It doesn't matter which airline I'm flying with, if I can somehow shower during a connection, I am instantly revitalized. Especially those times I remember to bring a change of clothes because changing into your old ones sort of defeats the purpose, right? As can happen in these situations, I spent a little too long feeling zen and forgetting that I was about to fly to another continent, so I suddenly had to rush to my gate. <laughs> But there is always time for a stop at the Qatar Airways store. Does anyone want to get me one of these for Christmas? Sadly, the product selection has been scaled back big time since its peak in 2019. And at that point, it was just so fun to go there because they sold literally everything you can imagine. Even AirPods in a Qatar Airways branded case. I didn't buy anything because I don't want you guys to think that I'm biased toward a specific airline. After all, I would never dream of wearing merchandise representing SAS or Iberia, for example. Example, but to reiterate, as always, I paid for this flight myself and the airline had no involvement. I didn't tell them I was on board, they didn't upgrade me, anything like that. 
In fact, for this flight, I shelled out the most I've ever spent on a single flight, and I think it's important to share for as much transparency as possible. This flight was $1,550. Since there was no award space on the first day of A380 flights, which was a huge bummer for my wallet, at least. There is plenty of award space on A380 flights in the beginning of next year, so if you want to get on board, I highly recommend using Qatar Airways Q miles to redeem. These can be earned with a limited time history historically high 80,000 point sign up bonus on the fantastic city premiere in the US. 80,000 points is enough for a one way business class ticket to almost anywhere in the world from the US on Qatar Airways. Alternatively, my Swedish viewers can enjoy a historically high sign up bonus on the SAS Elite card, which is exclusively available via my referral with a record 60,000 points. And although this doesn't get you Qatar Airways seats, you can book Turkish business class at a similar price. Enough talk about how how to pay for this. I just wanted to prove that literally anyone can do this. There's always a way with points, but here she is, the Airbus A380. So what does this bad girl look like on the inside? The Qatar Airways A380 comes in an unusually economy class focused configuration. Not only is the entire lower deck occupied by economy class, but the rear section of the upper deck is too. There are 461 economy class seats in total with two obvious choices for me of where to sit. I'd mainly choose the upper deck for the additional storage with the side bins by the window seats or the first few rows on the lower deck, which don't have a middle section. In front of the upstairs economy class cabin is the onboard bar, which is pretty massive and probably my favorite social area in the sky. More on that later. Ahead of the bar is the business class cabin, which has 48 seats spread across 13 rows in a one to one configuration. Crazily enough, this is the same number of seats the Qatar Airways has on their 777s and A350s. So really, the A380 only adds economy and first class seats to whichever route it serves. Compare this to the British Airways is A380, which has almost a hundred business class seats. I chose seat 22K in the last row, partly for the wing view and partly for the privacy of not having anyone behind me. This meant that I was served last though, which I was worried about given the reduction in staffing following the pandemic. More on this later as well. Last but not least, First Class is located ahead of the business class cabin on the upper deck and features eight seats across two rows. Interestingly, it's specifically designed for Qatari families, so the focus is more on having an open, comfortable cabin rather than privacy. You never know what your five and your two-year-old are gonna get up to in First Class, am I right? For my thoughts on their A380 First Class, check out my review in the card now. There's nothing more epic than this. Good morning, how are you? Very good. Hi, good morning. Hello, how are you, sir? How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Oh, well, tremendous, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. At the door, I was greeted by the cabin supervisor and her friendly colleague led me to my seat. I could already tell that something was different. This hadn't happened many times during the pandemic. What was going on? Then I was immediately offered a pre-departure beverage of choice, which was served by Rizal, who introduced himself and said he'd be taking care of me. He also gave me a hot towel to my absolute surprise. Although it's a tiny gesture, non-stop Dan viewers will know that hot towels are among my favorite in-flight amenities. Not because they're necessary, in fact, they're the opposite. They're completely unnecessary. So what better way to make something feel luxurious but copious amounts of unnecessary but heavenly heated or cooled towels? Better yet, they smell like rose on Qatar Airways, a scent that almost brought me to tears, smelling it for the first time since the pandemic began. For now, these are unfortunately only available on flights to London and Paris, as well as ultra long haul routes, so I'm sorry to break the news that you won't be sticking your nose in these towels on most flights for a little bit longer. Of course, the lemon mint, or as I like to call it, heaven mint, was as divine as always. What about the cabin? Well, 
It's massive, as I said, it's just one big blob of business class. It does feel incredibly spacious, airy, modern, and looks fantastic, right? There are individual air vents and large overhead bins by all the seats. I was just so happy with my decision to sit in the last row since, as I mentioned, there is quite little privacy since the cabin is so big. This was a great place to sit, and the irony is that this seat is still top-notch, even seven years after its introduction. In that time, Qatar Airways has introduced two new, even better seats, while most airlines in Europe have barely caught up with this from seven years ago. As you'd expect, on Qatar Airways, the seat is thought out in detail, with smartly placed storage on both sides of the seat. There's a charging port and a USB port, both of which allow you to charge items either while you're using them or storing them below, which is really important. There's also a large surface to store anything else, as well as bins on the side. The airline seems to have locked these so you can't use them for storage which is sort of bizarre and it even says no stowage on them. Call me a badass I guess. <laughs> As I sat there, I noticed the 787 next to me, which happened to be the exact one that Oscar was on flying to Stockholm 10 minutes after me. I of course enjoyed the new boarding music and was eventually welcomed on board by the purser who addressed me by name. In fact, Rizal and even other cabin crew members consistently addressed me and other passengers by name. Rizal encouraged me to try the limited edition drink for the FIFA Arab Cup called Mango Chili, which tasted like, well, mango and chili. Here's a look at the onboard menus and note the return of light options and snacks. Also, note my favorite freaking airplane dessert in the world, berries with rose water syrup. It sounds basic, but trust me, it is delicious. The wine menu is equally impressive, although I'm not the biggest drinker. Some people love to comment complaining that they hate my videos because they never see me drink. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that seeing someone drink every item on the menu is the only thing that makes a video useful. For me, it's all about the mocktails on board Qatar Airways. When Rizal came around to take my food order for the dining experience, as he phrased it, a phrase I thoroughly enjoyed for its extraness, by the way, I went all in and ordered not only my pre-selected vegan oriental meal, but also three items from the menu. Are you hungry right now? Not at all. Really? I'm so hungry. Well, you should probably eat. Soon enough, the rear-mounted camera showed the jetways being retracted, and we began our pushback. It was as busy a morning as ever in Doha, with a wait of 25 minutes in line to take off. Finally, we blasted up toward Paris on the beast and enjoyed some sweet views as we did. By the way, have you hit subscribe yet? When I pass 500,000, I'm gonna do some sweet giveaways that you don't wanna miss, including giving a few subscribers free business class flights. Doesn't sound half bad, huh? All of a sudden, there was a lot of commotion. A woman seemed to have had a panic attack during takeoff. So as soon as we were in the air, four crew members swooped in with an oxygen mask, took her to the bar as soon as the seatbelt sign was off, and talked to her for a good 20 minutes to calm her down. Since I was sitting in the last row, I could hear the conversation, and my gosh, they were so, so helpful and so sweet, and the woman eventually felt fine. I, on the other hand, was not fine. No man because I was indulging in my third glass of juice in less than an hour. This time, another one of my favorite drinks on Qatar Airways, the pineapple margarita. Sugar rush, anybody? Now, are you ready to see something that explains everything? As the meal service began, I was like, hold on. What is this? The entire pre-COVID meal setup was back. Even the part where the flight attendant rolls up the napkin and then puts it in your lap. The candle is obviously an additional unnecessary gem that makes the most Instagrammable photos and I love it as well. They even served an amuse-bouche in business class. Let that sink in. It was fish so I couldn't eat it, hashtag seaspiracy, but still so impressive. At this point I had to ask what was going on. Was service back? Apparently, yes. 
full service was back, but again, only on select flights to London and Paris. Hmm. But for me, who was lucky to be on this route, it felt just like the good old days, especially when my Arabic meza arrived. Don't talk to me while I'm eating tabbouleh and drinking lemon mint. I am in a different state, I'm in nirvana, and I cannot be reached. But please leave a message and I'll call you back when I'm suffering on board a different airline, like American Airlines First Class. <laughs> Next up, brace yourselves, was the vegan option off the menu. Guys, if you're on a Qatar Airways flight and see this, vegan or not, order it. It was incredible, by far the best meal I've ever had on Qatar Airways. The flavor combo of the tofu pecan stuffed butternut with the pickled radish and the green curry really felt like something you'd eat at a gourmet restaurant. Not to mention the presentation of the meal and the entire table setting which is just to die for. I followed this with some fruits and for those who are curious, they let me get a quick video of the FIFA Arab Cup cheesecake, which was also beautifully presented. After the meal, I wasn't gonna sleep or work, no, I was gonna continue my focus on food and beverage, so I went to the onboard bar. The alcohol apparently won't be on display in normal circumstances quite yet, but they took it out for this flight since so many people were taking photos. This is my favorite social area on any aircraft or airline since it's perfect for sitting and chatting with strangers in a non-awkward way. The open design of the bar also makes it feel more inviting. The best part though are these lamps. I spent some time chatting with the crew catching up on life and learned another interesting fact. As many of us know by now, especially if we've flown Qatar Airways before during the pandemic, cabin crew and thereby service have been suffering a lot from the reduction in staffing, leaving them with a higher workload than ever. Well, it turns out, at least on the A380, that the staffing is identical to pre-COVID. Not only that, but they've actually reduced the workload in business class from 12 passengers per crew to 8. Well, let me tell you, this was noticeable. From being led to my seat to consistently being addressed by name, being checked on every 15 minutes, and the remarkably personalized and friendly service from Rizal. Qatar Airways, if you're watching this, please know that we notice when the crew are happier and can do their jobs easier. Please resume full staffing on all flights because this is the Qatar Airways service we know and love. Guys ready for a look at the amenity kit? Qatar Airways has provided bricks amenity kits in various shapes and sizes for years and the contents have been consistent, although I hear they might finally be changing soon. Not that this is bad by any means, everything else you could ever need from a toothbrush to a shaving kit to a mouth guard for your falcons are available in the lavatory. Sadly, there weren't any falcons on board today's flight. At this point, I actually tried to get some work done, but the in-flight Wi-Fi has not been activated on the A380 yet. I won't pretend to understand the airline internet provider connection process, but I have a suggestion. Maybe they can sign the A380 up for a new free trial under a fake email address to get it up and running quicker. So instead of wasting time browsing Instagram, I worked on writing this video script, which kept me busy until it was time for three more courses of food plus bread. A flight attendant once told me the calories don't count at speeds over 500 miles an hour, which um, is my life philosophy. This meal started off with a rather bizarre beetroot dish, which I nibbled on before the good stuff. This sweet and sour tofu dish. Again, look at that presentation. I was actually so excited I forgot to record it with my good camera before I dug in. Whoops. <laughs> I'm very hungry. Psst, blame it on the mocktails. Finally, I got to enjoy my berries with rose water syrup. Cooking is another big passion of mine, so I've tried making homemade rose water syrup on several occasions, but nothing has come close to this. What a flight. With that, we started our descent into Paris. I enjoyed one more hot towel and said goodbye to the crew. This is Jerry and Rizal. They have been so amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The cabin services director and Rizal came to say goodbye to each passenger, which is just the cherry on top of a perfect flight. So let's get back down to earth. This was honestly my best flight of 2021, at least in terms of value for money. 
since the only one that could possibly be better would be Swiss First Class, but in many ways, this is more my taste. Unfortunately, I had an experience unlike most others, since it became clear very quickly that what is being offered on the A380 flights is vastly different from all other Qatar Airways aircraft right now. The others, unfortunately, remain understaffed with meals served on trays, no candles, no hot towels, and none of the flair that makes a flight like mine so special. There are two potentially positive things here though. Firstly, literally the day after my flight, Qatar Airways announced that the resumption of full onboard service is being trialed on the A380 and will be rolled out fleet-wide in the coming months. They've said the end of January 2022, which isn't far away, but there are still some small things missing, like chocolates, the number of hot towels have been scaled back significantly, and a few more tiny details. I estimate the very latest at which they resume real, full service would be in November 2022 for the FIFA World Cup, but then again, this might be an opportunity for them to save a little bit on costs. I used to think the airline was more about prestige than cost savings, which was reflected in their indulgent service model, but to be honest, I'm worried the pandemic has let them taste lower costs and they're now hesitant to ever go back to the service they had before. Additionally, the airline could really be bringing back all 10 of its A380s. Why? Because they've grounded about 25 A350s with more to be grounded soon due to structural issues that Airbus refuses to acknowledge. Qatar Airways need aircraft to make up for lost capacity and from a passenger perspective, the A380 certainly isn't a disappointing replacement. This means we could see A380s to more destinations. Like where? I could see them increase frequencies to Paris or London even more. Another option that could be reasonable is Bangkok, but the real treat would be if they sent the A380 to the US, which would be the first time on regularly scheduled flights. New York currently sees three daily Qatar Airways flights, so clearly there is plenty of demand. I imagine there is also some first class demand for Qataris going to New York. Sadly, this scenario seems sort of unlikely to me given gate restraints at JFK, but who knows? Those are my two and a half cents on Qatar Airways A380. I'm so sad. <laughs> I used to prefer most other aircraft in their fleet, but now I prefer the A380 since it's become so rare and mainly because they offer full service on board. If you have a choice, look into choosing the A380 in coming months. You won't regret it if your experience is anything like mine. As I mentioned earlier, NordVPN is a tool I use all the time, but especially when I'm in the Middle East. So many things are blocked in this region, whether it's audio calls via services like FaceTime, LGBT content, or all types of shows and entertainment like that. The worst part is that if you try to access those things, the local network provider will know you've tried to do it, which is a serious infringement on your privacy. Luckily, NordVPN protects you, making all your browsing completely secret and safe so that no local companies, governments, or anyone else can see what you're doing. They also unlock these services like audio calls so you can browser just like at home, whether you're visiting or transiting the UAE, Qatar, or another country in the region for a day, a week, or even longer. The key nowadays is that NordVPN needs to be installed on your phone or computer before you land, so don't wait. You can sign up for NordVPN at the link at the top of the description or at nordvpn.com slash nonstopdan with a massive discount and a few months free. And if you're not getting it for yourself, why not give someone you love the gift of safety this Christmas?